Toledo Rockets men's basketball head coach Todd Kowalczyk joining me in studio. Coach, great to see you. Great to see you, Scott. Glad we got the opportunity. Thank uh, you. Are you a baseball guy at all? Are you watching the Guardians Yankees series? I this time of year I do like baseball. <laughs> Do you, do. Do, you have, do you have time to watch I do. any baseball? Yeah, I do. I do. I enjoy it, but uh, I'm not a huge baseball fan. Don't follow it during the regular season, but in the playoffs, I do. Yeah, it's to me, I, and I love going to games. I love going to the Hens games, Guardians, Tigers games. It's a long season, man. It is. It is. I mean, that, that's a, it starts, what, in April and just finishing up now? But <laughs> I agree. Hey, the Mud Hens are awesome. It's great for this community. What they do is, is awesome. And you support the Mud Hens and the, the Hens support – uh, our Toledo Rockets as well. They sure do. Uh, so uh, what are you doing this time of year? We're weeks away from the regular season kickoff. You got an exhibition game this weekend, a big game in Michigan next Friday night. What are you, well, I mean, what's your schedule like right now? The month of October for coaches is awesome. You know, we don't have really games to prepare for. All we're doing is preparing for our season. So we coaches love to teach. They love practice. So we're, we're, this is our time. Players, they just want to play games. So they're ready. they're ready for another jersey to go against. But – the month of September is hard for coaching. We travel a ton recruiting, uh, but October is just worrying about our team getting us better. And I've enjoyed this team. I've enjoyed the the month and now, but we're ready to play against somebody else. We play, you know, on, on, on two o'clock on Saturday against a good Grand Valley State team, and then get a chance to go play at Michigan uh, next Friday night. Yeah, we'll have that game. Normally, we wouldn't carry an exhibition game, but this is a big opportunity for the Rockets, and we want to have that here on WSBD. Uh, that's going to be in Ann Arbor next Friday night, and and generally. Uh, as I understand it, and, and maybe I'm sharing a secret here, you and, and Michigan have played under the radar for a while. Is that right? We have with, with the previous coaches. You know, when John Beeline was there, we had what they called secret scrimmages where you learn a lot to publicize it. You couldn't have fans, and we did it for several years. Uh, and it was good for both of us, but I'm a firm believer. I'd rather play in front of the public eye, have, have that type of pressure for our players, have the lights bright, uh, have fans there, so it, it's more of a game feel. Now, obviously, it's an exhibition game, so it doesn't count, but it does count in, in, in the competitive spirit part of it. But, yeah, uh, and, and that's, that's one of the things that I think has made you and the Rockets team so successful is that you're not afraid to, to take on a so-called bigger school, and oftentimes you're able to win, too. Well, we're trying to play them as much as possible, but you know, playing big school, they don't want to play us very often. So <laughs> I'm not sure Michigan would have played us in a regular season game. Hopefully they will in the future. Uh, but an exhibition game, they got nothing to lose. You know, we have we played some exhibition games on the road at Finley Division Two, and that's been a great environment for us as well. And Finley's the the one that you've talked about on the coaches' show before. That's got like a, a small house, and and it's loud and hard to play in. You can't communicate. There's 1,800 people there. It's a negative crowd, which I love. Uh, it's, it helps prepare our young players to go on the road in Division One basketball. It's, it's been really good for us. And so tell me about the team. I like this team. We lost our top three scorers to the transfer portal. One went to Xavier, one went to Oregon, and one went to Minnesota, and they got significant money and checks and NIL money. Uh, and we replaced them with really good players. I, I, I feel really good in, in saying this, Scott, but we got a better team this year than we did last year. And Last year, as you know, we won our fourth straight MAC championship. But I like this team. We're long, we're athletic, we're deeper. Uh, we score easier. I mean, we have a better, better shooting team. Uh, so I, you know, time will tell. Now we get we got to you know put the work in and, and win the close games. But this got this team has a chance to be very good. When you lose three starters like that, to, is it more difficult for you to bring the team together and, and build that chemistry? No, I think it, it, it's it's just the opposite. It's, it's more opportunity for some of the guys that played last year, but maybe didn't have great roles. Javen Simmons, Sonny Wilson, uh, you know, go down. You know, Sam Lewis has had a great off season. So you know, look look for some of our other guys to step up and fill those roles and. And I think our leadership this year has been fantastic. Are you benefiting from the, the, the portal and NIL? Because if you're losing three of your key starters to bigger schools with, with more money, uh, that's a problem, first of all. But it also seems like some players may be attracted to a winning program like Toledo that has resources if they want to play and make a name for themselves. Right. Uh, are you are – you, are you concerned about people who come here for the short term and not the long term? I think that's just going to be the nature of college athletics right now, and you can't complain about it. You got to adjust. You got to pivot. Uh, we lost, you know, a really good player to Baylor a couple of years ago, Ray J. Dennis, uh, and was Baylor's best player this past year. And he, you know, he was awesome for us, and we were very appreciative of what he did. Now we lose, you know, with you know Dante Maddox, Raheem Moss, and Tyler Cochran. I think in this day and age that if you have a really good player for two years in college basketball. You have to be thankful. 
You know, don't be bitter if they leave. And we cannot compete with the NIL money as it currently stands. Now, there's a lot of change in the college athletics coming down the pike in the next few months, you know, with, with, with the revenue sharing, et cetera. Uh, so that's going to change even more. But we don't know as coaches exactly what that looks like. Nobody does. It's, uh, it's been the Wild West for a few it years. Has, it has. And, and, but we've gotten better. You know, I, I think, you know, we, we, we got, you know, two really good transfers from in, was it within the Mid-Amer- Mid-American Conference. Uh, one from Buffalo, one from Western Michigan. And I'll tell you today, they came here for two reasons, or maybe three. Number one, we win. They want to go to a winner. Number two, our players get better. And they like how we take care of our guys. And that, that's, that's it. It's not about... And, and I would say the third reason might be you, Coach. Uh, you may not want to pat yourself on the back, but well, I, I think a lot of players are drawn to you as well. I think drawn to me and the fact that our guys get better. That's the biggest reason, you know, and... and uh, you know, when when when, I'm, when we put our guys in position to get paid and to make you know, play professional, whatever it may be, that's that, you know that's a good sign for our, for our future guys. And you're also building a community of men as well, uh, because uh, one of the stats on, on your your sheet of the, the culture of winning is is that your program has a 100 percent graduation rate. Um, I'm, I appreciate you bringing that up because to be honest with you, not many people talk about graduation rates in the last you know three, four, five years. It's all about NIL. It's all about the transfer portal. And that transfer portal is really going to hurt graduation rates. Well, I'm proud to say in my 22 years as a head coach, we have 100% graduation rate when the national average for men's Division One basketball players is 47%. Is it really? Yes. I mean, that's that should be embarrassing for, for, for college athletics in it's general. It's embarrassing. It is. It's wrong. And that, that those numbers are, might be outdated, but that was when in 2017 when Kamala Harris – I'm going to turn out uh, – when they had, when, when went back and had a whole uh, FBI thing – uh, and 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 they clearly, you know, they, that that's the numbers they came up with. That's that's disappointing in yeah. in many ways. Yeah. Uh, coach Todd Kowalczyk here on the Scott Sand Show, head coach at the University of Toledo. Uh, what what are practices like now? You know, the guys got got to be itching to get on the court to play. Uh, how do you keep them engaged? Well, it, it, they need to play against somebody else. We've been a little bit chippy the last couple of weeks, and <laughs> you know, and, and as a coach, you got to be you got to be mindful of injuries and pulling back, but. Uh, I think our guys, they need to see another jersey. Uh, and uh, as, as they're, they're practicing and, and having to deal with, with schoolwork, what's, what's their day like? Busy. You know, from academics, they have, we practice in the mornings uh, at 9 a.m. So from 9 to 12, they're 100% basketball. After that, they are 100% academics. And, and they go to study hall. They have tutors. They go to class. Uh, and our guys, you know, for the most part, of our 13 scholarship players, I'd say ten of them are at their ability level or above it. We got three that we need to, you know, a little bit more, uh, you know, try to keep our our, our our thumb on top of them, making sure they do their work. But overall, I'm really proud of our guys academically. You make them work at nine o'clock in the morning. Absolutely, perfect. <laughs> is that the best time? It really is. I mean, let's face it: when you're in college, what, what yeah. did you miss? Eight or nine o'clock classes. They're not going to be late for practice. <laughs> that's that's true. <laughs> uh, again, uh, Michigan next Friday in Ann Arbor, uh, an exhibition game this weekend. Regular season kicks off at Troy on November fourth. As you're looking at the schedule, preview some of these non-conference games that are early in the year. Well, the the, the two biggest ones everybody wants to talk about is Purdue and Houston. Uh, you know. Two of the arguably the top five teams in the country, and we had a chance to you know to play them, and uh, very very thankful to those two coaches. But Kelvin Sampson at Houston, one of the best coaches in the country, uh, they're probably preseason number one, uh, right with Kansas, and then obviously Purdue last year lost in a national championship game. We get a chance to play them, and, and make a huge impact if you're able to to, to make, go if you're able to pull off the win, and you're going in there with right. that attitude. Uh, but when you challenge somebody, and I think that that competition does make you better. Is what's the feeling if if you're not able to pull out that win? Well, I think that the biggest reason why I want to play those two teams, Scott, is I want to I want our players to learn how to play the best. hard they play, how they though those those two teams are probably the hardest playing teams in the entire country. I want our guys to see that firsthand and get get up, you know smacked upside the head a little bit. That they you know just to see, hey, this is what we got to do, fellas. And winning those games, it, it obviously it's it's our goals we want to do, but it's not the big picture. The big picture is winning championships in Mid American yeah, Conference, sixth and max winning, title, and and going fifth for, in a row, well, and 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 the, obviously the conference tournament, which we haven't won. Those are the those are the big picture things, and you know playing the Purdue's and playing the Houston's helps us get to that big picture. Well, what are you concerned about in the MAC? Well, I, I don't. Everybody asks you know, who's going to be good in the MAC with the transfer portal. I really don't know. I mean, there's we have more players coming back seven than anybody else in the league. Uh, 
So there's a lot of teams that have three guys coming back. They loaded up on all these transfers. Who knows who go, how good they are? I don't. I don't even know their names. I mean, it, it's yeah. That's got to make it uh, difficult for you to to game plan if you have to scout new people every year. If you've got a a, a freshman sophomore that gets some playing time one year, you get to see them the next year. But if they're gone and you got new people, you're not really sure what they're going to do. Well, we'll have plenty of tape on the on our conference opponents. It is hard to do that for the non conference because you don't know quite know. You know, but you know, by the time we play Central Michigan or Eastern Michigan, well, they'll have played 15 games already. So we'll have plenty of video to learn about their personnel. So what, what's what's your game plan? What's your strategy? Without revealing your, your secret sauce of, of being able to pull off that, that MAC uh, uh, tournament win this year, take it to the next level? Well, I think you, a lot of things have to happen. There's three games in three days. Uh, you have to be healthy. You have to be playing good basketball. Last year, to be honest, we, we lost a simple art of, of making free throws. We were 9 of 21 from the free throw line. We lost, you know, we had two front ends, really 9 of 23. When we were when we were top twenty in the country in free throw shooting, uh, things like that, the little, the, the small, the details of not turning it over, uh, rebounding the basketball, all those things. You know, obviously making shots is important. Uh, you're playing in an NBA arena, so the baskets are different, et cetera. Obviously, it's still ten feet, but they, but they are different. You know, in those NBA arenas, so just going in, just it's, you know, making sure we were at our best during that time of year. You you don't go and do do the Hoosiers thing where you measure where you, where you measure the hoop and show them it's the same. Well, people don't realize they really they really the rims are tighter in the NBA. They the much tighter in the NBA. They they have a, actually people that go around from from arena to arena to make sure they're all the same in college basketball. It's not that that's not how it is. <laughs> so, is there is there some uh, tomfoolery that's taking place with the uh, rims? Everybody has something different. Yep. Some want tight, some want loose. Some you know yeah, it's and I somebody asked me today if I could change one thing in college basketball. It'd be to have one basketball. People don't realize there, there's every home – the home team can have whatever basketball they hey, want. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. We're the only sport that does Wait, it. How, why, why, why is that even uh, allowed? It, it's, it's crazy. Like if you're a Nike school, you have a Nike basketball. If you're a Adidas school, you have Adidas basketball. Some have Under Armour. Some have Wilson. Some have Spalding. Why can't we just have agreed to have one basketball and make it like the NBA does, like like Major League Baseball right. or football, even even college football? Now they have several different balls, but the visiting team brings their own. So when we go play at at Northern Illinois this weekend, they're they're Adidas schools. When we're on offense, we play with the Nike balls. When they're on offense, we play the Adidas balls. So they're, they're, it's, yeah, you can't really do that in basketball. You can't do that in basketball, but <laughs> but well, you I can could have the same ball. You can have the same ball. It's, it's pretty I had simple. no idea. It's it's crazy. I and. And it's a it, it, is it a difference? Is it, uh, it without make a difference? question? Without question, if you feel the ball, the weight of it, the you know the leather, whatever it may be, they they feel different. Yeah, it, it's different. So it, it really is a home court advantage. No question. What about in the MAC? Do do a majority of the MAC schools use the same ball? And absolutely not. We'll play again with with four <laughs> or five geez. different balls. <laughs> that's that's, that's crazy. absolutely crazy. Uh, so if, if I could change one thing, it'd be that. Believe it or not, that's, simple simple detail. That it seems, seems pretty simple. easy to, to rectify. It won't happen though. I've tried. That's crazy. <laughs> Coach Todd Kowalczyk here on the Scott Sand Show. Uh, the first home game in Savage Arena is Wright State on November 13th, if I'm getting this right. Uh, right. Wright State, November 13th. Uh, talk, uh, talk to me about the student culture at games in Savage Arena and what we need from the fans. Because i got to tell you, over the last few years, I've seen, and, and COVID, I mean, we, we, everything's changed since 2020, I realize. But going to football games, I've noticed an increase in student participation. I think the Fan Fest out front is been a big help to get students engaged for games. Uh, what do we need to do for to get the same engagement for basketball? Well, having having the students show up is huge, and if they energize that arena. And I'm telling you, when when the students show up, we play better. We have a better product on the floor. It energizes our season ticket holders. So really, the catalyst to the whole energy stuff. Obviously, you have to have a good product and a good team. Which but is, but I think uh, I think you've proven you've you've got. Well, we've had yeah, and I. You know, may, maybe the answer is you know we get some more sponsorship to get these get these college kids some 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 free gear, or some free beer. That might be a good thing. <laughs> I'm five, for it. Five MAC championships, fourteen fourteenth nationally in wins since 2021, uh, thirty six All MAC player selections. Uh, just uh, amazing stats since you've been here, Coach. We're we're very fortunate to have you at the University of Toledo. Well, we we love this community and uh, had a chance to to raise my family here. There's this is home and. Uh, the people in this in this area have been very, very generous to our university, our basketball program, and nothing but we need to be thankful. 
Can't wait for tip off. And of course, you can hear the Toledo Rockets right here on News Radio 1370 and 929 FM. I think uh, Coach Bogus is going to come in next week. I was one of the first people to talk with her. How, how are you two uh, getting great, along? Great. I, she, she's awesome. Uh, I think she'll do a really good job. She's vested in this community, she's got a really good team. Uh, a lot of people returning back, and she added some pieces too. Now, they're, they're young on the perimeter, but their post players are the best in the league. Uh, so clearly, that it's not a rebuilding. They're going to be, you know, reloading, and I, I, I'd expect they'll be right there for a championship again. Yeah, another successful program here at the University of Toledo. Yeah, Coach Kowalczyk, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for coming down to Hensville. Thanks, Scott.